What's happening, fam? LAR movement still moving. Subscriber die trying. You see the thumbnail. The self-inflicted struggler. So um, that's the the picture is from a clip, a movie called Breaking All the Rules. Jamie Foxx, Morris Chestnut, Gabrielle Union. There's a certain scene in the movie where Jamie Foxx tells Gabrielle Union that you know the human mind can't bite through its own flesh because of self-preservation, right? And you can bite, but you'll never draw blood because you don't, you only, you, you get to the realm of crazy and insanity when you can actually just bite down on your own flesh to draw blood. So he tried to prove he was crazy for her and he bit down, right? But I thought about that in the sense of there are people who are self-inflicted strugglers. So what winds up happening is you have people who need and are addicted to pity, to sympathy, to, to victimhood. And the world around them isn't giving them a struggle. Isn't giving them the struggle that they need. They, you know, they need a uh, um, a underdog story. So how can I have an underdog story if I don't come from an underdog situation? I create one. I put myself in positions that I will ultimately have to dig myself out of than to say that I achieved a certain status from, you know, I'm, a, I'm built different because look at the type of situations I came from and I came out of. Well, this is a self-inflicted struggle. And then people don't realize they get addicted to self-inflicted struggle. These are the constant sabotages, self-sabotages. You know, something happened in life where when you come across the path of people who um, are constantly looking for uh, help in somebody who's like uh, a savior in a sense, because for some odd reason, their life is so bad, they're entitled to somebody that they know or somebody that they don't know to come in and step in and fix their life for them. But what's not being said is you you did this to your own life. You know, I, these things happened to me as a kid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my path to a successful life as difficult as possible on myself because these things happened to me as a kid. And I got my story, you know, down to a T. So every time somebody comes across me, I came from this situation and it was like this and it was like this. And, and the reason why I'm at where I'm at right now is because when I was a kid, this happened to me and this happened to me and this happened to me. And I could never quite get it right because I could never catch up with everybody else. But you're not saying when you're a kid, you skip class. You're not saying, you know, when you're a young adult, everything they told you to get uh, to get you on the right path, you did the complete opposite and you wanted to get the same result. You know, so you got, and this happened, and this happened, and then I had this happen, and then I did this because of this, and, you know, oh, I got shot, and when I got shot, I, that's why I got this tattoo. No, 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 no. You got shot because you got yourself into situations in the streets unnecessarily that you didn't even have to get into because you wanted to give yourself, quote, unquote, street cred. Now, to cover up the wound, because now you're traumatized by the situation you got yourself into, now you got tattoos. And now you look a certain way, and now people go, hmm, unemployable. But that's, you know, that's your struggle. The person that, you know, I have all of these responsibilities. Well, here's the thing. The reason why you have all these responsibilities is because you were reckless. People told you to, you know, protect against doing certain things because if you don't, you might, you know, have a bunch of kids that you can't afford, or you might wind up being a reckless driver and you might wind up costing yourself a lot of money through tickets, fines, and high insurance rates and so on and so forth. And you, rec you know, you're reckless with money 
and you might wind up ridiculously in debt. But see, that's the part that you're not saying because now you're trying to say, I'm coming up out of this and I got a plan and I blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, 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 no. You're a self-inflicted struggle. Because you put yourself in a desperate situation unnecessarily to prove to whoever it was, even sometimes if it's yourself, that I could do it. You know, and some of you, you know, even with, you know, with the social justice warrior thing and with the racial thing and with the gender thing, and even when you see the media uh, depictions of certain things, it's like the emasculation of America is the agenda. So because America's got so spoiled that now I got to make up reasons to have anxiety. Anxiety is now a struggle. That's called procrastination, man. That's all it is. You're procrastinating and you're nervous that it's not going to work out well because you didn't put in the work. It's not anxiety. It's that you, you, you was BSing. That's it. That's what it is. You know, and now your struggle is anxiety. No, your struggle is you're lazy. That's it. You know, the, the beauty standards. No, your struggle is you overeat and you don't work out and you want somebody to accept you as a dime even though you're overweight. That's it. That's it. These are self-inflicted struggles. And then when you see people who don't have these struggles, then you dislike them. See, you you are you shame people for not struggling. You know, or not sabotaging themselves at the end of the day, which is ridiculous, but that's what it is. But I'm done for now. Like, share, subscribe, or die. Try and catch y'all on the next one. Peace.